5 a.m. going to the airport. <laughs> Too early. Yes. Hey everyone, it's me, Manisha. Back in March, I had the amazing opportunity to be invited by Unity to attend GDC 2022. If you don't know what GDC is, it's the annual Game Developers Conference that happens in San Francisco. Of course, due to COVID, the event was held online for the past two years, so this year was kind of the kickoff for it to happen in person again. It was super exciting because it was my first time attending. I'm a bit of an amateur at vlogging, but I'd love to share the interesting bits and pieces of the trip with you in this video. You may have noticed my friend Flo from previous videos. She tagged along and we also managed to get some touring in. So on day one of GDC, we left our lovely hotel to start the day off by visiting the Unity headquarters. Unfortunately, I didn't get to record any footage there, but we were greeted by Cal, who you'll see in future clips, and the rest of the Unity crew who were involved in the community aspect of Unity. They were also kind enough to treat us to lunch there. Although quiet, the office had a really nice vibe to it with its open concept working space and even a gaming and ping pong room. Afterwards, we decided to attend our first talk at the Moscone building. The conference center is a huge venue accompanied by an awesome view. The passes we got were Expo Plus, so sadly we couldn't attend the main GDC talks, but there were plenty of other session options. And we're heading to um, the Unity conference. Yes, they're gonna do, do a talk on URP, so let's go check it out. Oh yeah, so, we gotta hurry. Let's do it. Go across here. So an engine dev team from Unity did a technical talk about some of the new features from the Universal Render Pipeline. I'm no pro, so some of this stuff did go over my head but just sitting there and listening to the technicalities was definitely insightful. There was also a talk on Unity's Gagaya project. This is an extensive 3D sample game made by one of Unity's internal dev teams. Their goal was to be able to teach aspiring game developers how to create games. At the same time, they were trying to mimic the workflow of a standard game dev team. This gives Unity a better insight on what works and what doesn't for the typical user. I definitely think this is a cool initiative that Unity took to better learn how their community uses their product. We also attended some shorter talks throughout the day, and we definitely got lucky with the weather because we were blessed with sunshine and there was so much green space around the conference center to walk around. Later in the day, I went over to meet up with a fellow game dev and virtual friend for dinner. I'm here with Emily from Sondering Studio. Hello! I've been a big fan and now we get to meet in person! Awesome! Very cool! Cool! And she's been working on a taste of the past? Yeah, it's a... Um... So I just released my game, A Taste of the Past. It is a part narrative side-scroller, part cooking game about a young girl who finds herself on a train after the loss of her mother. So she gets to interact with her kooky ancestors while uncovering her mother's recipe for longevity noodles. And she learns about grief and loss and growth and identity. So yeah, definitely check it out. And it's also about like my upbringing as a Chinese American. So check that out as well. Yeah. Definitely go over to Steam to check out her game. It's actually free to play and a very touching experience. I actually met Emily through Ludumdare, which is when her team prototyped this game. It was so nice to meet her and just feeling the energy talking about her game was very contagious. Day two was more of a laid back schedule for us. Since the expo started the next day, we decided to get some touring in until the afternoon. We visited Japantown, a crazy looking road with a spectacular view called Lombard Street. Fisherman's Wharf. The Palace of Fine Arts. And of course the famous Golden Gate Bridge. It was definitely some speed touring, but we had enough time to get them in between our conference schedule. After getting back, we attended a couple more talks, one being a character design session presented by the artists that made Psychonauts 2. It really is amazing to hear industry professionals talk about their workflow, and to hear their thoughts behind it somehow makes it more approachable and less intimidating. 
That being said, some of these technical talks did feel like they were targeted towards people with some sort of background knowledge on the topic. As a casual indie developer, it really opened my eyes to the professional side of the game dev industry. In the evening, we head over to a non-official event where a lot of casual indie devs were playtesting their games. I played a bunch and really enjoyed the prototypes by students as well as aspiring commercial releases by solo devs. It's day three and finally the expo begins. There were so many passionate people gathered in one huge hall to showcase their work. We made our way through the expo trying out different demos from tech companies and game studios. It was great speaking to developers and chatting about the inspiration and innovation behind their projects and products. We definitely have some cool stuff coming up in the future regarding VR and motion tracking. And of course we had the epic Unity booth with so much going on. It was too bad Unreal wasn't there this year. It would have been cool to see them side by side. What a cool poster! I love seeing the Unity game showcase where I got to try a tunic, father, and some other demos made in Unity. It was fantastic to see Thomas Brush's game there and trying the exclusive demo was quite the experience. I was super impressed because I'm only familiar with his 2D games and this 3D game of his is equally stunning when it comes to the visuals and it played very smoothly so far. There were tons of cool demos to play at the expo and we've really tried our best to get through most of them. Today was also my casual chat with Cal about my game dev journey to fill in the gaps between Unity's main streams. It's always nice talking about my experiences, but I do feel like I need to stack up on some newer and more interesting projects. I was really nervous about live streaming from the booth, but it was such a cool opportunity to be part of a professional setup, and I'm super grateful that Unity invited me to take part of these. After wrapping that up, we head over to play more demos from smaller studios, some of which participated and won the GDC pitch event that happened in the morning. In the evening, we attended the GDC Awards and Indie Game Festival Awards night along with some peeps from Unity. It was a pleasure to witness such great developers in person. Tasha for supporting me. Thanks my parents for asking when the game would be done every weekend. And if you played it, thank you for playing it. <laughs> of course, Inscription bagged a ton of awards, and games like Psychonaut 2, Unpacking, and Ratchet and Clank won multiple awards as well. It is day four, and sadly, it is our last day at GDC. There was a lot more to cover in the expo, and we decided to keep walking around. I love that there were different booths representing indie studios from specific countries. It really is such a global event. My favorite section of GDC was probably the alt control demos. Here, studios combine the greatness of games and physical interactivity. In this pirate game, you have joystick controllers and even a steering wheel to play the game with. And in this math game, you can play with these monsters and even punch this little stomach bag. Some of them can seem pretty ridiculous, but it's amazing to see these funky contraptions. This Morse code game was pretty portable and I could see it becoming a real product. Definitely love seeing all the variety here. Next up, we had a chat about the content creation grind. I'm sure you recognize a couple faces here. We got Jason Wyman. Turbo Mix Games, and of course, Jabril's. Loved hearing about how they come up with ideas and their input on content creation. And of course, I was very thrilled to be meeting them in person. Right after that, I had my last event of the expo. Along with Cal, I got to co-host the developers of Cult of the Lamb, which is so cool. I remember being super hyped up when the trailer dropped and being able to talk to the developers now was something I did not expect. Just seeing a game like this made in Unity is super inspiring and hearing their thoughts behind everything was very enjoyable. And that wraps up GDC 2022. 
What an eventful week that was. It was my first time at GDC, my first time in San Francisco, and my first time seeing so many passionate game developers in one place. There were so many talks and sessions, and I'm sure I missed plenty of good ones. I definitely recommend planning and scheduling ahead of time if you expect to attend GDC in the future, especially if you're interested in specific technical topics. I learned so much and just meeting new people was a good time after the drought that COVID brought. San Francisco was so lovely and apparently we were lucky to have so much sunshine and good weather that week. Of course, I am so, so grateful to Unity for sending me to GDC and having me involved in their streams and pampering me so much. I would never have thought to be able to be part of something like this, so huge thank you to Elena, Cal, and the rest of the Unity team for having me. I hope you all enjoyed this little vlog of mine, I tried my best to cover my experience, and maybe I'll see you at a GDC in the future. That's all I have for now, catch you next time.